routing protocols, multi-hop network, design challenges in wireless sensor network, sequential assignment routing, multicasting in WSN. Routing protocol, the introduction. The routing protocol is a process to elect suitable path for the data to travel from source to destination. The process encounters several difficulties while selecting the route, which depends on type of network, channel characteristics and performance metrics. The data sent by the sensor node in wireless sensor network is typically forwarded to the base station that connects the sensor network with the other network where the data is collected, analyzed and some action is taken accordingly. In very small sensor network, where the base station and sensor nodes so close that they are they can communicate directly with each other then this is single hop communication but in most WSN application the coverage area is so large that it requires thousands of nodes to be placed and this scenario requires multi hop channel because most of the sensor nodes are so far from sync node so that they cannot communicate directly with the base station. The single communication is also called as direct communication and multi-hop communication is co called as indirect communication. In multi-hop communication, the sensor node not only produce and deliver the material, but also serve as a path for other sensor node towards the base station. In multi-hop network, an intermediate node has to decide to which neighboring node an incoming packet should be passed on so that it eventually reaches the destination. For example, node S sending to node D through number of intermediate node as seen in figure. This act of passing on is called forwarding. The simplest forwarding role is called flooding. The figure shows multi-hop network where node S sends packet to node D. Flooding is a common technique frequently used for path discovery and information dissemination in wired and wireless ad hoc network. Flooding uses a reactive approach whereby each node receiving a data or control packet sends the packet to all its neighbors. After transmission, a packet follows all possible paths Unless the network is disconnected, the packet will eventually reach its destination. Furthermore, as the network topology changes, the packet transmitted follows the new rules. To prevent a packet from circulating indefinitely in the network, a hop count field is usually included in the packet. Initially, the hop count is set to approximately the diameter of the network. As the packet travels across the network, the hop count is decremented by one for each hop that is transverses. When the hop count reaches zero, the packet is simply discarded. A similar effect can be achieved using a time to live field, which records the number of time units that a packet is allowed to live within the network. At the expiration of this time, the packet is no longer forwarded. Flooding can further enhance by identifying the data packet uniquely, forcing each network node to drop all the packets that it has already forwarded. Such a strategy requires maintaining at least a recent history of the traffic to keep track of which data packets have already been forwarded. The simple forwarding rule that for flooding uses to root packets does not take into consideration the energy constraint of the sensor node. As such, the node's energy may deplete rapidly, reducing considerably the lifetime of the network. To address the shortcoming of flooding, we used a derivative approach which is called as gossiping. Gossiping is similar to flooding except that a node receiving a packet instead of broadcasting the node sends it to only one of its randomly selected neighbor and the neighbor in turn sends the packet to one of its randomly selected neighbor. This continues until the packet reaches its destination. 
the process of finding suitable path for the source node to destination node is called routing and this is the primary responsibility of the network layer to forward the data packet each node maintains a routing table here the table shown is an example routing tables for two nodes are shown using hop count as well as cost metric design challenges in wsn there are some major challenges in wireless sensor networks due to the lack of resources such as energy bandwidth and storage of processing while designing new protocols the following essentials should be fulfilled by network engineer those are energy efficiency complexity scalability delay robustness data transmission and transmission models the last sensor location energy efficiency wireless sensor network are mostly battery powered energy shortage is a major issue in the sensor network especially in aggressive environments such as battlefield etc the performance of sensor node is adversely affected when battery is fallen below a predefined battery threshold level energy presence a main challenge for designer while designing sensor networks in wireless sensor network there are millions of modes each node in this network has restricted energy resources due to partial amount of power so the routing protocol should be energy efficient the second challenge is the complexity the complexity of the routing protocol may affect the performance of the entire wireless network the reason behind is that we have inadequate hardware competence and we are also extreme energy limitations in wireless sensor network then comes scalability as sensors are becoming cheaper day by day hundreds or thousands of sensors can be installed in wsn easily so the routing protocol must support scalability of network it further if further nodes are to be added in the network at any time when routing should not interrupt this delay is the next challenge some application require instant reaction or response without any substitution delay such as temperature sensor or alarm monitoring so the routing protocol should offer minimum delay the time needed to transmit the sense data is required to be as a little possible wsn application robustness is the design challenge wireless sensor networks are deployed in very crucial and loss environment frequently occasionally a sensor node might be expire or leaving the wireless sensor network thus the routing protocol should be capable to accept all sorts of environment including severe and loss environment the functionality of the routing protocol should also be fine the second last challenge is the data transmission and transmission model there are four modes of data transmission depending on the applications in wireless sensor network namely as query driven even driven and continuous type and hybrid type a node begins to transmit the data only when sync creates the query or an event occurs in query driven model and even driven model the data is sent out periodically in continuous transmission mode the performance of the routing protocol is a function of network size and transmission media so transmission media of good quality enhances the network performance directly the last challenge is the sensor location another major challenge that is faced by wsn designers is to correctly locate the sensor node most routing protocol uses some localization technique to obtain knowledge concerning their locations global positioning system gps receivers are used in some scenario sequential assignment routing sar 
is one of the first routing protocol for WSN that introduced the notion of Q QoS in the routing decisions. In a table-driven multi-hop approach, striving to achieve energy efficiency and fault tolerance, routing decision in SAR is dependent on three factors, energy resource, QoS on each path and priority level of each packet. This algorithm creates multiple trees where the root of each tree is one hop neighbor of the sink. Each tree grows outward from the sink and provides nodes which low, thro low throughput or high delay. The objective of SAR algorithm is to minimize the average weighted QoS metric throughput the lifetime of the network. If topology changes due to node failures, a path recomputation is needed. As a preventive measure, a periodic recomputation of path is triggered by the base station to account for any changes in the topology. A handshake procedure based on local path restoration scheme between neighboring nodes is used to recover from a failure. Failure recovery is done by enforcing root, routing table consistency between upstream and downstream nodes on each path. At the end of the procedure, most nodes belong to multiple tree. An instance of tree formation is illustrated in the figure. The tree rooted at A and B, two of the one hop neighbors of the sink are shown. Node C belongs to both tree both trees and has path lengths 3 and 5 respectively to the sink using the two trees. Each sensor node records two parameters about each path through it, the available energy resource on the path and an additive QS metric such as delay. This allows a node to choose one path from among many to relay its message to the sink. The SAR algorithm chooses a path with high estimated energy resources and provisions can be made to accommodate packets of different priorities. A weighted QoS metric is used to handle prioritized packet which is computed as a product of priority level and delay. The routing ensures that the same weighted QoS metric is maintained. Thus, High priority packets take lower delay paths and lower priority packets have to use the paths of greater delay. For example, if node C generates a packet of priority 3, it follows the longer path along tree B and packet of priority 5 that is high priority will follow the shorter, shorter path along tree A. So the priority delay QoS metric is maintained. SAR minimizes the average weighted QoS metric over the lifetime of network. The sync periodically triggers a metric update to reflect the changes in available energy resource after some transmissions. Multicasting in WSN. Multicasting is the communication paradigm of one to, one to many or many to one based on defined groups and constituted by members whose interest is to receive, share the same information for a specific application. A multiclass group can also have one or more senders. The multicast requirements over WSN is based on the application nature. It can be useful in two main scenarios. Support, a complete measurement of all devices monitoring a specific entity, for instance, a patient in a hospital who can move across different spaces being covered by different networks. The patient has some mobile wireless sensor coupled to him measuring his vital signals and other sensor placed in his room. Monitoring the room environment hence to require the entire measured information about that patient 
it is only necessary to multicast the request information for the group of sensor related to that patient. It supports the measurement of specific parameter in a network of heterogeneous sensor and assumes that this parameter to be measured is only supported by few number of these heterogeneous nodes. This scenario is included in the concept of future devices where each device is equipped with different sets of sensors. For example, if one wants to measure the temperature of all the patients, it is necessary to send the request message only to the node that are placed in the patients and that support temperature sensor. Consider the figure as it illustrates two described scenarios. G1, G2 and G3 are the multicast group that corresponds to each patient and G4, G5 are the group correspond to all body temperature nodes and to all room humidity nodes respectively. Hence, to obtain all information about patient 1, it is just necessary to receive the data content of G1 multicast group. As well, if one is interesting, interested in the humidity of all the rooms, he sends the request message to G5 multicast group. Tree-based multicast routing protocol. Tree-based multicasting is a well-established concept used in several wired multicast protocol to achieve high multicast efficiency. In tree-based multicast protocol, there is only one path between a source receiver pair. The main drawback of this protocol is that they are not robust enough to operate in highly mobile environment. Tree-based multicast protocol can be classified into two types, source tree-based multicast routing protocol, shared tree-based multicast routing protocol. In a source tree-based, a single, single multicast tree is maintained per source. In shared tree-based, a single tree is shared by all the sources in multicast group. Shared tree-based multicast protocols are scalable compared to source tree-based multicast protocol. By scalability, we mean the ability of the protocol to work well without any degradation in performance when the number of sources in a multicast session or the number of multicast sessions is increased. In source tree-based multicast routing protocol, an increase in the number of sources gives rise to a proportional increase in the number of source trees. This results in a significant increase in bandwidth consumption in already bandwidth constrained network. But in the shared tree-based multicast protocol, this increase in bandwidth usage is not as high in small source tree-based protocol because even when the number of sources of multicast session increases, the number of tree remains the same. Another factor that affects the scalability of source tree-based protocol is the memory requirement. When multicast group's size is large with a large number of multicast source in a source tree-based multicast protocol, the state information that is maintained per source per group consumes a large amount of memory at the nodes. But in a shared tree-based multicast protocol, since the state information is maintained per group, the additional memory required when the number of sources increases is not very high. Hence, shared tree-based multicast protocol are most scalable compared to source tree-based multicast protocol.